Welcome everyone. Today we have a massive update review for the Ace tier heroes and contraptions. So two big things are changing, and this is an epic review. This is an epic change. We have tested many many games before we started this review, so we're pretty experienced and we know what things does. So let's have a look. Contraptions are new items. They are tier two, tier three, and tier four items. Those contraptions does not take board space, and those contraptions can receive items like the little tide can receive items the other two have effectiveness so there's four contraptions in total and after the contraption are the ace tier units what are the ace tier units uh, a few of the tier 5 units has turned into ace tier that means they enable additional effect just by having one tier of the alliance and also you get increased rate by having the alliance on the board while having the legendaries or tier 5 units unlocked how, do, how does this work? Is that, let's say if, if I'm already level 8, I have two chores on the board. It is 1% to find the legendaries, which is a tier 5 units, but within the 1%, the 7 legendaries within the choice of 1% to search for legendaries. But if you have chores activated, alliance activated on the board, you have 15% more chance to find the chore warlord. So how we want to do things is, if you're searching for a particular legendary, and that is your ace unit, you have to make sure you have the alliance on board and no other alliance that is also affecting. You can take units on the bench to enable that. I'll give us another example. If I'm looking for inventors, I also have warlocks activated. I also have the chores activated. I'll take my warlocks back and take my event, take my chores back, enable me to search for my techies for the highest chance. What that is going to do is it gives techie 15 more percent chance to appear than any other tier five units. And because of that, we can tailor our lineup and adjustments for a few of those ace units, and they're very strong. We'll go right into the hero changes. The Bloodseeker is now a human assassin deadeye. That is very good because Bloodseeker needs to get his kills. And if he's a deadeye, he'll go for the units with less HP instead of going for like a 5k, 5.5k HP punch. And at other times, this may be concerning for the Bloodseeker because the Sniper and Gyrocopter will steal his kills. <laughs> it's like, I work so hard, then he doesn't get the kills. But overall, it is a better buff for the Bloodseeker. This enables for the Scrappy Deadeye Assassins super early in the game, and this can be very effective for the early game Scrappy Assassins. We tried it a few times, and the strongest Bloodseeker with Deadeye is with a Sniper and a Contract. Bloodseeker with a Bloodbound Contract with a few Ogres make it really nice. Bounty Hunter got a buff, not that much of a notice, and we tried Bounty Hunter, he's still a very good assassin at the start, as 2 star, but he falls off after round 15. Disruptor is one of a new tier 5 unit. Disruptor moved from 4 to 5, so he is the ace of Warlock. This also affects his alliance with shamans, because he's no longer a shaman. Disruptor is just a brownie and a warlock. On top of that, this is a nerf to the brownies. Brownie players have so much harder time to find their fourth brownie and to complete the you know overwhelming amount of HP. Because of that, brownie players are likely to go to level 8 faster and also this misses their timing to find 3 stars. I've seen players at level 10 not finding the disruptor and because of that, brownies has been nerfed in terms of not completing the four brownies, which is a good thing, because we're, we're pretty used to the brownies running over everyone with like 5, 10, and 15k HP. Disruptor got a stats buff, and the Disruptor Ace Alliance is when you have two Warlocks, or more Warlocks than two, the, all the Warlocks would link to two units instead of one. So it's double effective in terms of healing. We tried it once with a team of four Warlocks with Disruptor. We achieved over 10,000 healing with that team. So this, this, is a, this is a really fun one. And Disruptor is pretty legit, even with one star, but two star, he's very strong. The next on the ace tier is Enigma. Enigma is a shaman ace. So having Enigma enables the shamans. The shamans now lo no longer needs two the shamans now no longer needs three shamans. Shamans take two now. So with the two shamans, now oh, here we are. So with the two shamans, it is now 10% to turn the enemy into a chicken with shamans, down from 17%. 
But having an enigma means all allies will have the buff of the shamans. So your entire team can turn people into a chicken. And that is massive. A team that is tanky like warriors or maybe the trolls or maybe the mages can now have a passive ability to turn enemies into chickens. Aqua really enjoys this as well. And this is a very strong alliance. So if you haven't tried it, definitely try Aquaden with Enigma. Very, very strong. Next on the change of Ace unit is Gyrocopter. Gyrocopter is the Ace for the Dead Eye. Dead Eye now have True Strike, means all the Dead Eye units now will just counter the Elusive or the Evasion units. This include the Elusive Party with 3 and 6. This also include the Round 25, the the little birds and also include the blind from disruptor it's not the strongest but in terms of searching for gyro it really helps having the blood seeker and the sniper down to search for the gyro because you activate that eye you have 15 more percent to find gyrocopter within the legendaries the ace for the mages is lich lich is a massive pickup because it gives you increased mana gain for attacking and this is 10% per mage. Mage wants to cast fast, and Lich helps with that. This really brings back the 3 and 6 mage meta, and we tried it before, and this is pretty good. The mages now get mana faster, stuns more, and does more damage because they cast faster. As an ace for the mages, it's likely to find the Lich because we're likely to already have 3 mages, and this increases the chance of finding the Lich by 15%. Well, keep in mind, that we want the alliance of the ace already on the board to be searching for those. And if we do not have those or we have other ones, we might want to take those back to the board. Also, Lich is super strong with Octarine Essence because of the reduction of CD and Lich together with Warlock, we tried that in one game, was superbly strong. So definitely looking into two more mage builds. Medusa. Medusa is the ace for the scaled alliance. Now, Medusa has experienced some nerfs before, but this time she also got nerfed. She got the attack range nerf, she got the stone gaze radius nerf. So that means she's not as strong as before, but the change is the scaled units now does retaliate. They do 25 damage per second per alliance level buff. So I think there's two alliance level buff, so the maximum they can do is 50 damage per second. It's not really the damage that comes in handy, but searching for a two-star Medusa is much easier. If you already have your scaled with Slark, Slarder, and maybe Tide, you can find your Medusa, and you can use her as two-star as a great way to stun. Even the radius changed, she can be put forward with a Helm, or maybe put in a back line with a Scardi as well. Ogre Major was too strong before, and now he got a nerf. So Ogre will always cast Bloodlust on himself, then to somewhere else and it has to be the one that he's closest to so he's going to cast on the melee, melee units instead of range units and because of that ogre is not the three star ogre that gives a free moonshot to the terror blade it's more the ogre has to survive for five seconds to buff someone else this is still okay with the blood bomb build but in other builds ogre does feel not as the dominating one star or one tier unit he was but if we go Ogre and Majors, this can still work. I tried Ogre with a Basher, he still works pretty fine. And once you get him to 3 star, he can survive a little longer. Next up, we have Techies. Techie is Ace for the Inventors. This is very interesting, simply because this grants the Inventor the chain reaction. If an enemy dies from the exploding Inventor effect, they will explode as if they also have the exploding. I have played savage build and an enemy had a three star clockwork he died and then my entire savage team just exploded because every one of them exploded and that damage actually compounds because so many units are next to each other when one explodes the other one dies everything explodes so this is a very interesting alliance i definitely want to try it with a blink dagger blink dagger lets you to be in the thick of things and you explode on everybody as long as one of them dies it's likely everything else explodes as well so this is massive, and this really brings back to the inventors. With the four inventors, Gyrocopter, Techies, you can go with Clockwork, Timbersaw, and Tinker. There's actually five to pick from, but we'll upgrade into Gyro later. The next up, we have Troll Wallot as the Ace of Trolls. The Troll Wallot has got a buff from 1 to 1.3 attack speed, so he attacks 30% faster in comparison to before. 
and the trolls also grant your units mini bash. This means the entire team have 5% patrol alliance level of stunning their target. This means they can actually do mini stun. This is not the strongest alliance, but if your entire team actually have a percentage of mini stun, if just because you have two trolls, this is actually pretty good. The biggest thing here is to how to search for troll warlord. He can be crucial for warriors, crucial for trolls. You have two trolls on the board to search for troll warlord. Once you find the troll warlord, you can sell your barrier or sell the shadow shaman. To add on top of the troll warlord, the troll warlord actually got a nerf of attack speed. So what happened is he used to have one attack speed, now he has 0.77. The wording here is definitely interesting. So if we look into the troll warlord in the hero section, if we look here, into the stats, we can see the troll warlord actually have 0.77 instead of 1. That means he attacks slower at each level. So this is actually a nerf to the troll warlord attack speed. So one of our viewers actually pointed out, then we double checked. Now we look into the new contraption items. The first contraption is actually the barricade. This barricade does not have any damage, 400 HP and 20 armor. Once picked a tier 2 item barricade, you actually get two of them. So you have a choice to place them. We have tried a few times. This is effective with Sniper. Sniper can be hiding behind the barricade and do some decent damage or a range unit. But ideally, this is the best with Sniper when you just block him in the corner. But other units might have difficulties to move if they are blocked by the range unit. If you have the barricade blocking in a certain way, the range unit outside of the barricade may be hitting and the range unit inside might be hitting, but if you don't organize units properly, they can backfire. So barricade is not the top tier item, but it can have its gimmicks. You can block for assassins, you can block from different blinkers, you can block them out. But keep in mind, although it's a tier two item, it is more for early game. In the later stage of the game, it can be effective, but it has to be very creative. So it is a situational item. The second item we have is target buddy. We call it Tide's Little Friend. It is a tier 2 item as well. This item is very strong in the early game. You can pick up this item before round 4 and before you start a PvP. The Tide Buddy has 100 health and also 10 armor. This item also can equip items. So what that means, you can give it a blade mail, give it a chain mail, give it anything that increases HP. It doesn't have any attack, it does not do damage, but it will be taunting every 10 seconds. You put him in the front, it's like a free two-star axe. It does not take a spot on the board. So if you have four units, this can be your fifth unit, or fifth item on the board, and this does not take spots into having other units on the board. So this is a very strong early game item. This goes into the mid game and even goes into late game. Late game, if the enemy have a disruptor, just put a type buddy there, instant taunt. Have no CD and no, no mana at the start. So this will do an instant taunt at the start. So this is a very good item, definitely recommend it to pick it in the early game and even in the mid game. So give that a try. And we'll try it with Blink back as well. It will blink in, do what X does, instantly taunt everyone, then it dies. It's effective. I also tried with other things. Maybe a helm, I get him to taunt, but the taunt is 10 seconds. So helm is not that good with such a long CD. So this is a very good item for the early game when you save up with a win streak. On the next part, although the picture is a little awkward, is this is a healing ward. Healing ward have 200 health and the radius of healing ward is 3 times 3 so 8 cells covered other than healing ward. Healing ward usually is placed in the middle. It heals for 20 HP per second. This is a pretty good item if your units tends to bulk up or if you just want additional healing. Notice this is a tier 3 item and it only has 200 HP. So what is likely going to happen is enemy have dead eye or something that does damage to AOE wise or something that hits it, he will die. But if no one hits it and if you go into a sustain fight or if you plan to have units that enjoys from healing like warriors or maybe even mages that box up in the corner, this can be effective. This item personally for me is an average item because there's better tier 3 choices, maybe muscle madness, maybe, you know, uh, Octane Essence, those are good choices as well. So even a mech is okay, because if this item dies, it does not heal as much as 250 compared to mech. This item has to stay alive for at least 15 seconds to be effective. 
That said though, I have had fights with this item with Warlocks and with Ward dying. So this is situational, but you can make use of it with a good positioning. You can also combine this item with the Tide Buddy and also the Barricade to make a little fortress, so which is very fun to play. The last contraption is a Tombstone. We can't see the Tombstone right here because of the picture, but the Tombstone is actually a tier 4 contraption. It has a really high HP and armor. This is also like a three, tier 3 or tier 2.5 unit. You're getting a free unit for free, and the moment any of the heroes dies around the zombie, they will summon another. Sorry. The moment any heroes die around the tomb, which has got a pretty wide radius, I think it's got two cell radius, so it's four times four, they will summon within two cells of the tombstone, so they will summon a unit depending on the grade. If one star unit dies, it will summon one star zombie. A three star unit dies, it will be a three star zombie. And the zombie will instantly be summoned. So I'm sure most of us thought about it. The tomb will work with summoning stone, the tomb will work with savages, it will work with units that summons like maybe primordials. Also, if you put it into the center of the fight, it is a really good taunt. It does not take another item though. Unlike the target body, unlike the target body, it will take item. This is the only one that takes items. The tomb is a really solid pickup. I think as a tier 4 item, it is slightly above average for me. We're looking to the alliance change. Shamans, as we spoke earlier, now requires two heroes. It went from 17% to 10%. But with the power of Enigma, you just have Arc Warden Enigma, everyone will turn the enemy into chicken at 10%, which is one of the strongest allies in the late game. The assassins got a buff at all stages. No longer can we find three no longer can we find nine assassins, but we can find three assassins with 5% more critical rate, which makes them quite strong in the early game. We can find six assassins with five more percent of critical chances, which makes them stronger in the mid game. But the downside is there's no late game for assassins. We tried assassins and they were not good in the late game. No matter how strong we are in the early games, there's just so many builds that destroy us. There's majors, knights in the corner, there's shamans that chance us with the chicken, there's brownies and warriors that still eat us, and not much assassins can do, even with three stars. They really do need the last tier of allies. So I think this is a great buff for early game assassins, but in the late game, we need some crucial stuffs, maybe Blink Dagger Tide, maybe Disruptor, maybe, you know, a Blink Sanking or something that stuns multiple times. Next up, we have Elusives. Elusive seems like got a buff in the early stages, but they have lost their super strong Elusive powers in the late game. So again, similar to Assassins, this can be considered a nerf to the late game. Most builds do arrive late game, so this is not good for the Elusive, to be honest. I'm okay. <laughs> I played Elusive a few times, but, you know. Elusive is really good at tier 1 now with 25%, and also tier 2 with 50%. The downside is there's no ultimate build in not Elusive anymore. So you can't make that super terrible or super slack. So in that sense, I think this is definitely a nerf to the Elusive. I have not seen many people try it after the patch because of that. Lastly, we have the Warriors change of alliance. Warriors went from 3 Warriors for 10 armor and two, 6 Warriors for 15 armor, which gives 5 additional armor, which is very low. Now we get 20 armor for 6 Warriors. So this is a massive buff to the Warrior. We rarely go into 9 Warriors, and having the second tier of Warrior giving another 10 armor means we can go into 6 Warriors very comfortably, and Warriors can build into so many things. They can go into Heartless, Warlock, Hunters, the shamans, where it can also go into chores, where it is limitless. I believe this would definitely be a warrior meta, and if I would plan to rank up, I'll definitely try warrior build. Warrior also counters the knights because they have multiple stones. There's conquer, there's Pudge, and also you can use the doom to counter the brownies. So warrior is definitely the one to look out for, and we have found a very strong warrior build with eight alliance. I'll be posting that for you guys as well. It's a little surprise one, and it's also unbeatable. I haven't thought of a build that can beat that build because you have the shamans, you have the chores, and that's enough control and damage. You also have the healings from warlocks and also the tankiness of warriors. Multiple stuns from conquer and tiny. Lastly, we have a change of rates again. I'm very happy of this change because previously 
we had a terrible legendary raid. I'm not sure why they reacted so badly, but we are back to the old legendary raid at 1%, 3%, 6%. We'll always take that. Now the loser of this rate change again is the tier 1 units. If you're planning to go to level 10, you have even lower rates for tier 1 units. And also a slight lose out on the tier 2, which is not that big. And because of that, we want to be aware that if you want 3 star tier 1 and tier 2, you roll at level 6 and 7. I'll maybe roll level 8 latest, but as you go further, you lose so much rate as those rates go into the tier 4 and tier 5. That said though, this meta is very good. We tested with multiple games that 3 stars can rise, legendary builds can rise, early leveling can rise, and just a variety of builds are coming over. So because of that, it's not just that if I don't find my 3 stars, I lose. If I don't find my 3 stars, I can level for my disruptor or maybe my troll warlord. If I don't find my chobot or disrupt, if I don't find those units, maybe I can find an enigma for the shamans. So this opens up flexibility and options. So we really like that. Now, to summarize, this was a massive update in terms of the additional items. Now, keep in mind, because a few of those were tier 2 items, this will in turn counter the Bloodbound contract build because contract is a tier 2 item. Diluting the pool of contract means there's less chance to find the Bloodbound contract and that would in turn nerf the Bloodbound build, which is okay. It was very strong, but now with this change of rates nerf, it makes it more acceptable and when we find more of them, we feel more lucky. Overall, the Ace of Heroes means we can afford to be going to level 9 and even level 10 faster. But keep in mind, you still want to call heroes to two star at least and go further with multiple lines. Let me know what you guys think after testing a certain build or maybe testing a certain contraption. If you have a good way of hiding your units or barricading yourself or maybe building a fortress. So definitely let me know in the comments below guys. If you like this guide and we plan to have more reviews and guides on builds and tier lists for this patch. So definitely subscribe and turn the bell off notification for more guides to come. Thank you so much for watching guys. Please also support me by following and maybe subscribing on Twitch as well. Thank you, thank you everyone.